can you tell me what it is that you're showing right here? Uh, we're actually showing our sensory technology that is typically used for uh, autonomous vehicles. It acts as their vision system. It measures the environment in 360 degrees around the vehicle. It gives it a clear path and it can detect all the obstacles as in motion. So this is really the forefront of sensory technology being used with uh, autonomous robotics. Uh, you'll see these on many vehicles coming up soon as well as uh, Google's vehicle. Lexus has their autonomous uh, platform here as well that they're showing here at CES. Uh, if you go there, you'll see our sensor up there mounted proudly. And uh, it's great. Uh, it's a great place to show this stuff off. You know, we're showing uh, Deladyne's technology is not just in speakers. So how does it work? Uh, it uses lasers, actually 64 lasers. Where? Up in the head. We put 64 lasers in there and we spin the entire assembly around and that gives us a 360 degree view around the sensor. In doing that, we can see a 26 degree vertical field of view so we can actually see just about everything that's in front, on side or behind the vehicle in real time. It allows this vehicle to be able to navigate safely without having to do, have any uh, driver intervention whatsoever. So where are you based there? Bettledyne? We're, we're based in Morgan Hill, California. We're in the, the heart of technology in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we uh, have been there for quite some time. We actually started out developing um, high-end home theater subwoofers. We actually basically turned the audio world on its head by producing a virtually zero distortion subwoofer system that was virtually unheard of uh, back in the 80s. So uh, we've grown the company from that point into a very substantial home theater electronics company. Uh, we're here this year introducing our new headphone line and using our LiDAR technology as a, uh, as you could say, an attention getter. And that it does. So you just make the part up there? Yes, we do. Just the spinning part? And we make that sensor. That's one of two models that we make. We, uh, that goes down or is somebody else or? What was that? And the cable that goes down to where? Where does it go? The cable goes down to the inside. We're actually just currently have that plugged into a laptop. Can I, can I see what goes on in there or not? Um, there's nothing more than a standard uh, stock vehicle. We just have uh, some of our supplies essentially in there. So this is not a functioning self driving <laughs> This one is not functioning as of yet, but even if it was, you really wouldn't see anything because it is a hybrid. All the power assist functions on the hybrids are electrically controlled, so we basically plug into the factory computer and we can actuate all those functions through an external computer system. So there's no, you know, there's no motors, there's no, uh, you know, air actuators, none of these types of extra things that would get in the driver's way. So basically a driver could sit in the car, basically let the car drive itself and just sit comfortably and not have any of the mechanics around them. Everything still seems stock. Okay. Is, do, so the self-driving cars need to have something that big up there? Is it possible to have something smaller? Currently, yes, because uh, this is still in a development stage. And since it is in a development stage, a lot of the um, reduction in size hasn't really taken place. Uh, we're actually, most of the companies are still waiting on Congress to pass laws to set guidelines for autonomous vehicles to be used on public roads. So this involves uh, insurance companies. Somebody has to be held accountable should an accident occur. And so there's a lot of negotiation going on as to who actually would be responsible, either a sensory manufacturer, the vehicle manufacturer, or the person who's actually in the car controlling the destination of the vehicles. But here in Nevada, they like gambling, so it's already legal. Yeah, it's already legal here. Uh, as long as there's a driver in the driver's seat, the driver doesn't actually have to take any action, but he does have to be there as a backup. You've Same tried. thing in California and Florida. So you've tried the self-driving car, right? You've been in the passenger seat? Uh, yes, I have. We actually built our own self-driving vehicle back when uh, DARPA introduced the Grand Challenge events, which was a government program to advance research in driverless vehicles. And that's pretty awesome? Yeah, absolutely. That actually got the ball rolling. Uh, it started out that nobody could do it at the first event. And once they learned actually what all the pitfalls were, the second event was actually a great success. Um, then they decided to take this and take it up more than one notch, as I'd say probably more like a hundred notches and involving an urban environment, which actually involved putting everything in um, an actual urban environment where all the robots had to interact together as well as basically pass 
a state driver's exam all by itself with no human intervention. And that was the biggest uh, challenge yet because that was the forefront in having human-like uh, activities within the vehicle as a robotic uh, platform. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Are they showing uh, self-driving cars here at CES? I guess they are. Yes, okay. Lexus has their vehicle. Oh, they're not demoing it. I fi finally got a chance to go look at it this morning. It is a beautiful setup. Uh, they have it on one of their sedans in the middle of a big turnstile, and they have a wonderful display showing off the technology that they've developed around our sensor. So for now, most of the Google self-driving cars are using Lexus, or? Yeah. No, oh, no. Well, they were using uh, Toyota for the longest time. I imagine they're probably partnered with Toyota and Lexus. Um, they are also using our sensors as their main platform for sensory perception. So there's uh, Sebastian Thrun at the, out of Stanford, uh, kind yes. of doing some self-driving car stuff. So what what is his part in, in there? From what I understand, he is the lead engineer on their autonomous driving program. I don't know specifically. Google is pretty tight-lipped about the uh, their activities until they're really to reduce them to the media. So what we know in the media is what we know as well. So are you expecting like uh, later this year or starting next year you'll sell a million of these? Um, probably not likely. Like I said, it's going to be really dependent upon Congress. Uh, once Congress starts passing these laws, the, uh, the big money will start rolling in and making things uh, more uh, cost effective and viable for consumer consumption. Well, just some other country, right? Any country, and you just sell it there, right? Oh, sure. But I, it's, some of these sensors are actually uh, restricted into some countries because of their sensory ability. So um, there are several that are actually developing their own driverless systems in Europe. Um, one of our other primary markets is actually 3D mobile mapping, um, which actually has generated a lot of uh, entrepreneurs starting their own uh, uh, map collection startup and like, uh, selling like the data. Like Google Street View cars and stuff? Similar to something that they're doing, but Google is not doing three-dimensional as of yet, as far as I know. But uh, companies like uh, Navtech, which uh, supplies the majority of the uh, navigation maps for your, for your sat-nav systems, um, they are actually deploying fleets of these vehicles out collecting three-dimensional data uh, to basically map the entire world in 3D. It won't be long before you see this in your commercial vehicles where they're going to have all your 3D representation will be on your GPS system in your vehicles. So not only can you have a self-driving car, you also have a true representation of the environment around you on your screen. Peut-être en apprendre à se connaître. Je me révèle petit à petit. Et parfois ce n'est pas à mon, à mon avantage, certes. Mais j'aime trop dans un sens sortir ou avoir ma propre vie, ma propre indépendance.